So it's pretty cold when I wake up in the mornings now. The sky is grey, I'm considering it autumn. I know it's not officially autumn yet, um, but I'm very much feeling the autumnal vibes. And along with the autumnal vibes, I kind of get the craving to read longer books. Now this is kind of a twofold situation because by this time in the year, I'm nearing my reading goal for the year. So I think I'm two books away from the 100 book goal that I set myself. So I kind of start feeling as though there's less pressure to read more in a month and I can kind of turn my attention to longer books. I also find that longer books are kind of like a blanket for the warm nights and you can just kind of get lost in them there's longer to read because the evenings get darker there's less to do um yeah for, for various reasons anyway autumn for me is about long books now the observant among you will know that i have done a few long book videos in my time um which always actually seem to go down quite well for some reason and admittedly I have probably not read many of the long books that I've spoken about in any of those videos because generally I gravitate towards shorter books. Um, it's weird because I really love long books and it's like I went a few years ago through a period of adoring long books. Um, I read The Luminaries and then I think I read Great Expectations and I read I'm sure another big book in that same year that I really really adored. Um, so I kind of went on a big book kick after that because I really loved the chance to get lost, especially in the luminaries, it was just such a captivating experience um, and it was so cosy and comforting and it lasted for so long, it was just nice. Uh, since then I haven't really read them because at that time in my life I was unemployed, I had a lot of time to read, um, whereas when I got a job obviously there was less time for big books and you know generally I was gravitating towards the shorter books so, so that I could speak to you guys about more. However, um, as I say, now that I'm coming towards the end of my reading challenge, I thought I would pick up a few longer books this autumn. Um, I'm currently reading The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch, um, which I'm nearly finished and I'm really enjoying that and it's totally reminding me why I enjoy big books at this time of year. So I thought to hold myself accountable I suppose I would talk to you about a few big books that I would like to get to this sort of autumn time um, and perhaps cross a few of them over into winter. I've kept it fairly reasonable with just five books. Now when I say big I mean over 400 pages you know not small. Um, they're not huge books most of these some of them are but generally they're just weightier books than perhaps I would gravitate towards on a usual month. So Firstly, I have got The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. Now, Katie from Books and Things is hosting a read-along of this. I will post her announcement video in the Goodreads group down below. Um, and I have been wanting to read this for a long, long time. I know it's one of Katie's favourites, and me and Katie always have quite similar taste. But also, my mum read this when I was really young. Um, and she recommended it to me and I never got round to it because it was a recommendation from my mum and I was like it's clearly not going to be very good but actually I, I kind of regret that now so I bought myself another copy um, because I'd given the other one away but yeah I haven't got round to it because I knew that Katie was doing this read along so hopefully I will be reading that along um, I don't know whether sorry Katie I don't know whether I'm going to stick to the chapters because for me I have to read things fast but I'm going to be sort of participating hopefully anyway in a roundabout way um, so yeah that's exciting I don't really know much about this other than to say that it has a lot of literary references I think it's kind of a ghosty story set in a bookshop so all good things for this time of year and yet yeah, really looking forward to that one. Then I've got a big book reread which has been on my wanting to reread pile for a very very long time and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, annoyingly I, I don't consider myself a fan of Jane Eyre because I read it and I really enjoyed reading the first half of it when I was about 16. It was kind of the first big classic I had tackled um, because I was doing English literature in college and I was suddenly like I haven't read any of these people um, so I went on a bit of a, a spree I suppose and I really did enjoy the first half of it but I think given that I was so new to classics I wasn't used to the kind of slower pace of them, um, the wordier language I don't know it just kind of got on top of me and I put it aside for other things and then I came back to it when I was 19 um, and annoyingly it had stayed really really fresh in my mind I could remember that she was in the boarding school I could remember everything that had happened um, which isn't often the case so it is a very memorable book um, so I thought you know what there's no point starting again I'm just going to read from the end um, so I read the second half and I think that was the worst way I could have read it because 
I, though I remembered all the key factors and there was nothing that I was missing, I could remember everything that had happened. I think when you read books in such a disjointed way, you kind of lose the pace of them, you lose the characterization, you lose the, I suppose, commitment that you have to them. Um, so I just didn't care, I didn't really like it, I found the second half really boring and draggy. Um, I think absolutely my fault. So I bought this pretty edition and I'm been meaning to reread it for a long time and I think this is a good excuse to finally get to it and again I think it's kind of lovely and atmospheric so maybe a good one for darker evenings. Then I also have The Essex Serpent by Sarah Pe Now I have spoken about perhaps reading this quite a few times um, and it's never happened. I think I had it on my TBR for some readathon that I did and I just never got around to it. Um, I'm pretty sure actually I've had it on my TBR for probably two or three readers on that I've done and never got around to it. Um, so I want to finally get to this. Again, it's not the hugest book, but it's bigger than perhaps I would typically pick up. And I have a feeling it's going to be kind of... In my mind, I'm setting this up as kind of a bit like the Luminaries in the fact that I think it's kind of historical fiction. Um, I, I believe it looks at this serpent um, figure that keeps appearing. I'm, I'm In my head, it's kind of sounding a bit like it might be kind of Luminaries-esque in terms of the pace and how much I enjoy it, hopefully. Um, I have heard mixed things. I think it's one of those books that got a lot of hype and a lot of people were disappointed because of that. But I'm kind of going into it not particularly expecting a great deal and hopefully I will be pleasantly surprised again I just get the feeling that this is going to be a good one to get stuck into then finally I've got probably the biggest books on this list which are Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky um I have wanted to read this for a very long time. I have to say, these editions of books are my absolute favourite. The Vintage Classics Russian editions, and they are just stunning. I don't, I just, I just love them as physical objects. I mean, they're beautiful, and, and they've got lovely end papers. I mean, you just can't expect more from a book. But anyway, that's enough of me gushing about the edition. So I have wanted to read Crime and Punishment for a long time, especially since getting it in this edition. Um... And it is one of those books that it's just quite big. It's quite big. I mean, there's quite a lot of writing to the page. And, and it, it's, it's a hefty book. I mean, this copy comes in at over 500 pages. So I think it's going to take me quite a while. However, I think that autumn slash winter, I might leave this one until closer into winter really um, but I think that will be the perfect time to read it because Russian classics I often find are quite atmospheric they're quite doomy and gloomy and they're obviously set in Russia so there's often snow and things like that and it just just I think it will satisfy my autumn or winter cravings so yeah looking forward to that one and then finally one that I'm probably going to get to first though I'm speaking about it last is Arcadia by Ian e. Pierce um this is a library book hence why I'm going to get to it first I, I have renewed it now for far more times than I am willing to disclose so I'm going to finally get to it admittedly this probably isn't that big a book but because it's in a big hardcover edition it looks like a big book again I know little about this other than that it has been compared to um, His Dark Materials. Um, I know, again, I've heard mixed things about this, but I know Jane Campbell adores this and says that it's really full of sort of references to other literature and if you can pick up on those, it really adds to it. I think the thing, again, with this is that people go into expecting one thing and it's another. I have a feeling it's going to be quite an easy read. I think it's probably not the most highbrow literature in the world. However, I'm kind of feeling that at the moment and I think it's just going to be a cosy and fun little exploratory fantasy book um so i'm having positive hopes about that one as well so those are all the big books that i hope to get to i think i'll probably read at least three of these in the coming months um if not more and as i say i'll probably roll a few of them over into the winter months as well please let me know down below if you're reading any big books this autumn and i will see you next time bye